let's say at some point the woman's uh, analytical level is slightly lower, let's say she's got a cold and uh, the baby shouts something or she slips off a chair and hurts her head. At that point the, the, the analytical mind will shut down more and the reactive mind will come up and this voice, if you like, comes up and says, you're a stupid, useless whore, all right? And then in Hubbard's theory, then the, 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 the person then will start acting, not necessarily even out becoming a prostitute, but will, but will start being really stupid, you know? And she might start having an affair. You know, this is kind of, that's Hubbard's reasoning, right? And he's saying that, you know, each person's full of all this kind of stuff. And this, is, this can happen at any moment, and this is the danger, you see. So you don't know what's in your reactive mind. And this stuff can click in at any moment, and you might be working there and doing well, and all of a sudden, bang, you find yourself on the street as an alcohol with vomit down your front. Why? Because you didn't know this reactive mind was there. So you need to go clear. And if you go clear, then the, the, the analytical mind is fully rehabilitated and it's fully brought into its, its full glory, if you like. Um, he says that the clear has much higher intelligence, much higher energy. He has no psychosomatic illnesses. Um, you know, it's a beautiful, wonderful picture of clear, this kind of superman, this kind of... And he says that clear, you totally get rid of the reactive mind, it's gone. There's no danger of this stuff happening anymore. Well, I am a young fella from a very troubled background, a very troubled childhood. Um, and of course, as a result of a troubled childhood, a trouble engaging in school, and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, had a bit of a esteem problems, you know, um, all these things. And to me, I'm saying, wow, so I'm really buy into this idea that you can go clear, and I want it because I often feel bad about myself. And I'm not making the logical thing, look, you had a crappy childhood, there's something you need to deal with there properly. It doesn't talk about that at all in Scientology. You buy into the simple sales pitch um, and the aspiration of being this clear person who's able to be totally in control of the world. Totally in control of this world. Um, thinking quickly and wow, you know, uh, and I'm saying, okay, good, I want that. Um, so I'm looking at trying to go clear and then uh, I'm, I sit down with one of the salespeople um, who's going to help me on my route to clear. She shows me this big chart called the Bridge to the Freedom. And the bridge, it's called a bridge because it's supposed to be the idea of a bridge across the chasm, you know, to this wonderful state, you know, the idea that people might have tried to reach the state before without Scientology, but fallen into the chasm as a result, you know, these little horror stories that he subtly interjects. You know, you look at that and say, my God, Hubbard was not a good man, but he was a, my God, he was a clever man. He was a very, very clever con man. The, the salesperson, Susanna, um, again, uh, an attractive woman, you know, she's attractive woman very well, um, tells me that to get to clear, I'm going to need to spend about um, at least 30,000 at that time, Deutsche Mark, right? I don't know, 30,000, another help. And she asked me, you know, well, do, <coughs> you know, do you have any inheritances to you? And I go, look, hold on a second. You know, that even, even me, who's super naive, kind of twigs, whoa, you know, on that one, I says, no, 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 forget it, you know, uh, I'm not going to go and call out my parents, and say, my, my, my foster parents, and say, look, is there any inheritance due, you, you know. <clears throat> I'm told that if I join staff, then um, I will be able to get the counselling to clear as a staff member. I get, uh, reduced rates on, the, on it. In some cases, I get free. They say it's free, but it's an exchange for your, uh, your, your work. You'll get counselling to go clear. <coughs> so, okay, fine. Can't argue with that too much. So, um, 
I gave up the little part I did. Well, no, I had a job. I was working. I was doing some spray painting work in a factory. Uh, and I give that up and I start working there. And the first week, um, they, made a, they made a big sale to somebody. Some, maybe one or two people might have bought clear clear package. So my first week as a staff member, we, we all go out for a big celebration. You know, and I'm saying, well, this is good. And, you know, I've got a nice lump of cash in my pocket. Um, going out to this nice restaurant that's paid for and I can't be that bad at all. I was. Okay, good, I'm on to a good thing. Of course, the next week's after that, I'm on a horrible tiny sum of money and begin to have real trouble paying my rent and real trouble feeding myself. You know, it begins to get worse and worse and worse, you know, I didn't realise it's kind of a, you know, kind of a crash and booms kind of system that, that Scientology runs. I do a thing called, uh, one of the first courses I do is called the um, communications course, communication course. And you're introduced in the communication course to a piece, a, a routine, a training routine that remains <clears throat> right through your whole Scientology career. No matter how high you go, you constantly go back to and redo this little piece of training. Uh, and it's called the training routines. And it has been described as one of the most viciously and dangerously hypnotic routines ever devised. This is by you know, an actual psychologist who looked at it. I can't refer his name now, but um, it's supposed to help you to improve your ability to confront and communicate with other people. And it sells you the idea, and again, it's, it's putting these little ideas, these little hints in that you are actually in this bad state, you see. So you're sold the idea that you actually have trouble communicating with people. Now, it may be the case, it may not be the case, but you buy the idea that you have trouble communicating, and thus you need Hubbard's help to help you to communicate. Right, so um, you find yourself sitting in a in a room. Um, doesn't matter how there might be a number of people there. You're twinned with another person. You give a very specific set of instructions, which in the initial stages involved um, just being able to sit like this, comfortably, hands on knees, eyes closed, and not reacting to anything. Okay, so your eyes are closed, and you have to sit there for. I don't know, X amount of time. I forget what the time frame was on that initial one. Uh, but the idea was you don't fidget or move, you see? And that you don't talk and that you don't get nervous. You just have to sit there. And what you're doing there is you are beginning the process of suppressing certain intuitive responses. Um, to sit for, 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 for any creature, but to sit in a fairly vulnerable state, uh, in, a, in a room with strangers, you know, the, the, the part of you, part of your natural defenses says, no, you should, what are you doing? You don't do that, you, you're supposed to keep alert. You know, people do, they do it subconsciously, you just do it, you stay alert, you know, you're looking at people, and somehow maybe you know where the door is, but. You know, you, you, with this routine, you are suppressing all of that. You're pushing it down. You have to sit there, totally calmly, and relax, and just listen, or you know, not even think. He says, "Don't think. Thinking is bad." You begin to learn that thinking is bad. Okay. Um, once you've done that to the supervisor's satisfaction, you then have to do it with your eyes open. Okay. So you're sitting in front of someone with your eyes open, looking at them. Again, you must not flinch. Okay? And again, look, it's just counterintuitive. So you're, you're, I suppose you're, you, you, you're sort of, you're giving away your natural right to defend yourself. 